Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. Um, today we're watching Jin Jang versus Jin Dubi. Uh, Jin Dubi is from Tanzania, rank 4, and I think Jin Jang is rank 1. I'm pretty sure, but I didn't look up his ranking. I didn't watch the, the pre-walk-in uh, fight. And they're fighting here at the Grand, uh, Grand Prix, Roma Grand Prix 2022. Um, I'm covering this video because I want you guys to watch... Um, a perfect example of progression theory and not only in the timing but the adjustments and uh, the, ho the whole thing is just executed flawlessly here so play the clip excellent 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 so uh, one more time i want you guys to watch and try and think about um what the start is for the progression theory the progression theory is for those of you guys who don't know it's giving the same look to your opponent repeatedly to force a pattern and then capitalizing on the adjustment your opponent will adjust to i'm uh, if that's confusing I'll, I'll show you guys what i'm talking about such a good setup so in this situation boom 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 Okay, breakdown thought for thought. So in the sequence, it's essentially, you're gonna see, watch Jin Jang's back leg. It's gonna move forward a little bit, front leg lifts. The second iteration is back leg moves forward, front leg does a short to medium range kick. And the last one is front leg moves forward. Jin Jang does a really, really short crescent kick, ends up, ends up getting him. And the reason this uh, thought process is the way it is, is because on the first move, uh, the first time he moves forward, right? Small, it's very, very, very small. Little, little move forward, little lift. You can see uh, Tensinia gives a, a little bit of way that he's on the defense. Now, when, if you guys are uh, not, I guess, at this level yet, and you're fighting someone who's not quite at this level, they very well may do, they, they, they very, they may do the same defense over and over and over again, in which case you should punish them the same way over and over and over again. But at this level, it's very commonplace that you're not supposed to do the same defense twice because it's easy, unless you're setting your own trap. Um, but it's very easy to get countered if you do the same defense twice. And so, he, he so I, I say all that to say this. He moves the back leg forward, then the front leg lifts. Tunsinia gives away defensive position, defensive mindset. He, he kind of moves backwards. He doesn't lift the front leg. He doesn't give any other information. The second lift... You can see he kicks kind of short. Like Jindubi moves slightly back. The reason for that was because if he's not, so we're using the assumption that most people don't use the same defense twice. So if he doesn't move back, he's probably not, if he moved back first, he's probably not gonna do that again. So of the three options, that's not available. The second option is he's gonna counter in place. The third option is he moves in. So this kick short, kind of to the front end of the hogu. I mean, Jindubi didn't move back. He just moved back just a tiny bit. Would have countered either, would have either clashed with a counter or maybe a scored. Or if he was to go in, it's a little bit in front, so he would have got caught, right? So he didn't do that. He actually moved back twice. And so what this last progression is, is if he, doesn't, if he didn't counter or move in, the usual progression after that and someone moves back twice is to try and close the distance because they... Uh, they want to reset so they can they want to reset the pacing of the fight so they can uh, be the one be the initiator so one two and on the third one that's exactly what Tanzania tries to do he tries to blitz in and um, Jin Jing is able to predict it now this move um, I say all that also because this 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 move he has here is phenomenal it's a back leg step up into a short crescent kick this is so good not just because it's scored, obviously, but because usually most people, when they're fighting, when they step up with a back leg, they're trying for a front long range kick. I mean, if you're going to kick short in place, why would you move your back leg up? You just lift your front leg, right? That's the, that's the usual, like that just makes sense. If you're going to, if you're not moving, you don't need to move. Don't move the base leg. You just lift the front leg. Usually when people move the back leg, there's a, either a really hard kick coming or a really long range kick incoming. Jun Jang kind of took that meta knowledge and said, well, if they're going to predict that, what's the counter to that? The counter to someone going deep, kicking deep is to either um, kick really short to the, like, if I were countering someone who's kicking me deep, it's either kicking short to the face or closing the distance as they're kicking deep because their, their body's going to be in a weird position and then counter. And so Jun Zhang said, okay, well, if people are going to try and clash in on me, 
most likely that's what the adjustment is. If people are going to try and close on me, if I'm going to try and do a deep attack, what's a counter to people closing in on me? Doing a step up short crescent kick. So the setup and pre-planning for this is great. The execution in the ring here is really, really good too. One, we'll watch the entirety. Boom, boom. So well executed. Now, the, the other part I wanted to point out to you guys is the timing in which he does this. So something I have, uh, when, I've, when I've coached other people before and I'm trying to implement this with a team and I'm introducing this concept to a team, uh, we'll do, they, they kind of take it as like, okay, progression part number one is this, progression part number two is this, progression part number three is this. And then in between, they'll like try and mix in motions. But that's not what we want when you're trying to force someone in a reactive state. Uh, we want them in a reactive state just because it, they're easy to predict when people are reactive, it's easy to predict people's reactions versus if they're thinking clearly, then they can come up with their own reaction. You don't want that. You want them doing predictable things so you can hit them in the face. Um, the timing of this is very quick. So watch how, watch the, I want you, I'm gonna play this one more time. Watch how fast he moves from one to two to three. It's not, it's, it's pretty nonstop. One, two, three, right? Like how much, there's, there's almost no time in between each of those um, where he's going one, it's, it's one, two, three, right? And when you're doing progression drills, it should be about that speed. If not, maybe a little bit faster, like a, there's, you know, a little leeway, a little bit faster, maybe a tiny bit slower, but it shouldn't be much slower than that. That That is about the timing you wanted at because you want your opponent in a predictable reactive state so you can capitalize on whatever adjustment they're thinking about doing. In this case, Tanzania was thinking about sliding in to close the distance to either, uh, it looked like he's, he has his really good um, slide in, left leg to the body, left leg crescent kick technique that he was trying to blitz on. And Jin Jang, great, great counter. Um, so overall, the take home message for you guys who are watching this for coaches or parents who are watching this, um, with progression theory, if you guys haven't seen that video yet, please search my videos. But you're, if you're, uh, intermediate trying to go advanced um, I would really suggest trying to think about how you normally attack how you can use that same attack or how that attack is normally countered and then how you can use that attack and morph it into an adjustment to counter what they're gonna use to counter you um, I know that's a lot of like mental math to do but uh, what if you guys watch the other video it explains a lot better but this is a great example I wanted to share with you guys. I saw this and I was like, that is exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, I hope this was useful to you guys. And if it was, please like, share, subscribe, or comment. I really appreciate all of that. And I'll see you guys next time.